Welcome to our classic movie of the week. Um, must mean it's Thursday again. Uh, today we're talking about an Alfred Hitchcock directed film called Sabotage from 1936. Um, it's also sometimes called A Woman Alone, so if you're looking for it um, to watch yourself, then it, you may find it called that. Um, also, Hitchcock uh, made a film in 1942 called Saboteur, and this one's called Sabotage. So <laughs> if you're interested in watching this film, don't get them confused. Um, it is a crime thriller genre, uh, which Alfred Hitchcock, I think, rarely deviated from. Um, that was his wheelhouse. So it's a really interesting film. It's um, about there's a manager of a cinema in London and he's involved with a group of foreigners who sabotage things. They basically plant bombs and things like that. And he is tasked with planting a bomb in Piccadilly Circus in London, but he's, he has concerns that it's going to cause injuries. And so far he hasn't really gone down that kind of road. Um, but meanwhile, he's married to a really um, kind and beautiful uh, woman called Sylvia, I think. And, oh no, she, we don't know her name, that's right. We don't know her name in this movie. Um, but yeah, so he's married to a really nice woman and she's being befriended by um, a sort of a local business owner. But he's actually an undercover agent for Scotland Yard who is trying to infiltrate or uncover this um, group of saboteurs. Um, also in this mix is um, the wife's brother, and he's only a teenager. So his name is Stevie. Um, so that's kind of the mix, and it's a bit of a sort of race against time. Who's gonna, who's gonna get away with what, basically. Um, interesting point about this film just to sort of start with is that we don't know who the saboteurs are and why they're doing what they're doing so this film came out in 1936 some people kind of look at it and think you know it's anticipating the sort of Germans um, second world war but really um, we don't know there could be some political group or something um, Alfred Hitchcock adopted this expression that he pulled into the mainstream. I think it was used by someone before him, but um, Alfred Hitchcock talked about the MacGuffin. So the MacGuffin is um, just a device, basically, in a movie or a book. Um, and it's just like the trigger for the plot. So in Hitchcock's mind, and in the mind of a lot of people who you know, write books and movies, it doesn't really matter what the MacGuffin is, it's just everybody wants it or whatever. So it's like the thing, you know? And so I think that's why this film is a little vague because it's sort of like Hitchcock saying to us, like, you know, look at these characters and what's gonna happen and what choices they're gonna make, as opposed to trying to get us to understand, you know, why people become terrorists or whatever like to him that's like that's not relevant so he doesn't he's like that's just the MacGuffin that's just the reason why you know um so yeah interestingly um Hitchcock in this period I think was still working mostly in the UK uh, he did obviously make some really big films in Hollywood later on um so this is one of his earlier ones previous to this he made a few but there's one called the 39 steps and in that he worked with uh, Robert Donat, or Donat. I actually don't know how he pronounced his name, uh, whether he pronounced the T or not. But he wanted to work with him again in this movie, and he couldn't. There were some scheduling conflicts and some health issues, so instead of two actors that he wanted, he ended up with um, John Loder, who was in Now Voyager and How Green Was My Valley. If you're trying to place him, 
Um, he plays Ted Spencer, who is the undercover uh, Scotland Yard guy. And Hitchcock just felt like he was kind of wooden. And some critics agreed with that as well. He also didn't like uh, Desmond Tester, who is uh, Stevie. He's the teenage brother. Um, but he, he didn't really have a choice, so he went with them. But um, Desmond Tester is... Um, he did a lot of things. He actually was born in the UK, I think, but he ended up in Australia, uh, where I am from, and he was on a couple of episodes of A Country Practice. So <laughs> there you go. If anyone knows, uh, if any of you Australians are watching or listening, um, he was on A Country Practice. Uh, so the plot itself, or the story, is based on a Joseph Conrad. Uh, I think it's a short story, not a novel. Um, so... There are some changes in it, though. Um, Hitchcock set it in a cinema um, as opposed to a different kind of, like, to a shop or whatever because he liked the way he could make what was on screen in the cinema in the film kind of echo um, events in, in the plot of the larger film. So that's kind of, to me, that's very Hitchcock. The sort of box within a box type of a, you know, play. Um... So, something happens in this movie, and I think, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to tell you, like, what it is, but there's a moment where um, there's a lot of tension created in this sequence, and you don't know, uh, there's an innocent person involved, and you don't know whether, like, because they don't know that they're in danger. And it's incredibly suspenseful, and it really shows uh, Hitchcock's, even at in early on in his career or earlier on in his career, the way he's masterful at just creating tension and building it. And you just kind of want to shout at the screen. Um, but it's important sequence because it gives the impetus for us to really understand, um, why everybody wants what they want and the outcome of the movie. So, um, it's, it's something to look out for in this film. I'm being very vague because I really don't want to spoil it. Because when I watched it, I was thinking like, oh, okay, you know, like, this is very tense, but it's, you know, it's all going to be fine, like, because it's a movie, right? And then something happened and I was like, wow, I was not expecting this. Um, which, you know, is saying a lot for a film from the, from back in the day. Um, another thing I like about this is that no one in this, well, the saboteurs group themselves are not very nice and they're quite underhanded and slimy, but the cinema owning husband is actually like kind of kind and likable and he makes decisions that make him less likable, um, but he's not unsympathetic. He's, it's sort of you really feel for him for a little bit. He's a bit stuck. And um, I like that because I think I quite liked um, the undercover guy and I quite liked the guy that he was hunting and I liked his wife. And you know, and you just sort of think, how is this going to turn out where everyone can sort of live happily ever after? And it's a Hitchcock movie, so <laughs> it's not going to work out well for everybody. Um, There's also a sequence where Hitchcock does something. He breaks a cinematic rule um, where if you create suspense and tension, people need to not have that, like, violated. So he makes you feel for a character or for a few characters and then they don't necessarily get a happy ending so that can be kind of a difficult thing for audiences to accept um, but this film is a classic and people did like it and it was fairly well received at the time so that, I feel like that's kind of interesting um, so I thought I'd just share that little tidbit with you I'm being a little vague because again I don't want to spoil anything but um, if you know what I'm talking about you can always Put it in the comments, I guess. Um, 
So the actor, uh, John Loder, he's kind of interesting because he was married five times. Um, so initially when he was young, he had uh, a child, like he was unmarried when he had his first child. So that was a bit shocking. And then he was uh, a soldier. And then he ended up being married five times. And at one point he was uh, married to Hedy Lamar, who was, um, for a while she was considered the most beautiful woman in the world. So she's a fascinating person in her own right. But since she's not in this film, I won't, I won't talk about her here. But um, yeah, it's, he's just sort of an interesting person. And I think it's interesting that Hitchcock didn't like his performance and felt like he was wooden. Um, and then you sort of juxtapose this with this kind of guy who seems like maybe he was a bit of a, I don't know, like a, <laughs> I'm thinking like swashbuckling kind of a character, you know, married five times and in and out of the military. You have never to have been here before, second affording to come here on your salary. That's what everyone would like to know. There's a mystery about me. And come to think of it, there's a mystery about most people. Haven't you got some terrible secret? Never mind about that. What goes on after hours in that cinema of yours? Deeds of darkness. Does your husband go on mysterious journeys? He does, wearing false whiskers. Aha, that means there's another woman in his life. <laughs> What's the joke? <laughs> if you only knew him. He's the kindest, most harmless, home-loving person. He also worked in um, films in the UK and in Hollywood. He was in a bunch of films, like quite a lot. So, um, yeah, I actually hadn't really seen him in anything before that I can, that I really remember. Um, so it was nice to see him have more of a, a role in this that was memorable for me. Um, but I actually think everyone in this is really good. Um, I don't think there's an actor or performance in this that is is bad or ruins the film or anything um but yeah it's i really like hitchcock films i don't really like hitchcock the person not that i know him personally or anything but um i do really like his films and i feel like because i've seen a lot of the bigger ones that came later like vertigo and psycho and north by northwest and some of those that i feel like i can rewatch and rewatch. i actually really like coming across these ones from earlier or the smaller ones that I just haven't seen for whatever reason. Um, and this is one of those. It's like, it's not obscure, but it's sort of, um, it's one of those films where you would, you could easily mistake it for another one. Like, oh, sabotage. Is that saboteur? Is that the secret agent? Like, so there's that. And so it's almost like, it's not a forgettable film. It's actually quite, there are moments where I was like, wow, you know, like it's sort of not quite a powerful film that might be going a little bit far, but it's a good movie. And I feel like there's something about Hitchcock that's quite, he's always ahead of his time. So even though this is back in 1936, watching it, I kind of didn't really feel like I was watching something really old. Um, Cause there's a couple of movies you watch in the thirties and some of them are sort of dated but enjoyable and then others feel very modern and I feel like this is one that really shows what he would do later in his career um and I think it does some unexpected things as well uh, so it's not like a lot of other films that kind of went to a cookie cutter formula um you know with happy endings or this or that so um definitely definitely worth a watch especially if you like if you like Hitchcock definitely watch this one obviously um but if you like um you know sort of thrillers and suspense and that kind of thing um this is a really good one I've I mean I've seen I've seen like films that are maybe more like stronger or especially when you think I mean over the course of the last hundred years there's been a lot of films and a lot of thrillers but I feel like this stands up and I, I feel like it's kind of a nice, you know, trip into the past of filmmaking. So, um, yeah, definitely see if you can find yourself uh, Sabotage from 1936 and make sure you don't get it confused with any other film. <laughs> um, please give us a little subscribe or follow or a like or a comment. Um, so often when I make these, there's so many little 
side alleyway things that I could kind of go off on a tangent and I I don't do that but if you want to discuss anything definitely pop it in the comments um, because I always like to see the things people come up with and talk to me about sometimes people have some interesting fact or something that I didn't come across um, so that's always really fun and uh, I guess I will talk to you guys next Thursday